In order to understand the importance of the gametes, we need to be able to compare them to the other cells in the body, which are known as somatic cells. Your somatic cells, all the other cells in your body except the sex cells, contain two copies of each chromosome. Now humans have 23 different chromosomes in their cells. The biggest of the chromosomes is labeled chromosome number one, the slightly smaller one is chromosome two, then chromosome three, chromosome four, all the way through the 23 different chromosomes. The somatic cells have two copies of each of these chromosomes. Two copies of chromosome one, two copies of chromosome two, two copies of chromosome three, etc. These copies come from the parents. One copy comes from the mother, one copy comes from the father. So if you were to look inside one of my cells, I would have two copies of chromosome one. One copy that I got from my dad and one copy that I got from my mom. I would have two copies of chromosome two, one that I got from my dad and one that I got from my mom. That's what I have in all of my somatic cells, two copies of each chromosome. This condition is known as diploid or 2N, having two copies of each chromosome. The two copies of each chromosome are not identical. They're a little bit different. The copy of chromosome 1 I got from my dad is similar to, but not identical, to the copy of chromosome 1 I got from my mom. These are called homologous chromosomes. They contain information about the same proteins, but they don't necessarily have identical versions of those different proteins. Somatic cells divide by the process of mitosis. Briefly, in the process of mitosis, you start with a 2N cell, you copy the DNA, and then divide once into two identical 2N cells. Let me show you what that process looks like drawn out. Here is a drawing of a 2N or a diploid cell. This particular cell I'm drawing has two pairs of chromosomes. It has a long chromosome, similar to our chromosome number one, and you can see there are two copies of this long chromosome. One that I have in red that would be representing the one that came from my mom, one in green representing the copy that I would have gotten from my dad. These are homologous chromosomes. I've drawn them in different colors to show that they're similar, but they're not exactly identical. In this drawing, there's also a pair of short chromosomes. Again, this would be representing a short chromosome from the mother and a short chromosome from the father. And these would be a pair of homologous chromosomes. They would have information about the same proteins, but they're not necessarily identical. When we go to copy this cell, first, we have to copy the DNA. To do this, we're going to make an identical copy of each chromosome. So here's the original long chromosome from my dad. And we're going to have an identical copy, another long chromosome just like this one. These two identical copies stay associated with each other for a little while. And we call these the sister chromatids. I also need to have an exact copy of the long chromosome from mom, an exact copy of the short chromosome from mom, and an exact copy of the short chromosome from dad. Now that we've copied the DNA, in the next step, these chromosomes are going to line up in the middle of the cell. They're pushed to the middle of the cell by some cytoskeletal filaments called the spindle. These are microtubules that grow from near the outsides of the cell and push the chromosomes in to line up in the middle. So here we can see the spindle, represented as these dotted black lines, that have pushed the chromosomes into the middle of the cell. 
So we have the same four sets of chromosomes copied, and now they're smooshed together in the center of the cell. In the next step, we pull the sister chromatids to opposite ends of the cell so that we can divide these sister chromatids into two different cells. So that's what happens is we're going to end up dividing this cell right down the middle. Anything on top of the black line is going to get pulled into one cell. Anything below that black line gets pulled into a different cell. We're going to pull one long red chromatid to the top and one to the bottom. We're going to pull one long green to the top and one to the bottom. One short red to the top and one to the bottom. And a short green to the top and a short green chromosome to the bottom. What we started with was one 2N cell, one cell that had two copies of each chromosome. We copied the DNA, divided once, and what we end up with is two cells, each of these cells is 2N, each cell has two copies of each chromosome. This cell has two copies of the long chromosome and two copies of the short chromosome. This cell has two copies of the long chromosome and two copies of the short chromosome. So these are 2N or diploid cells. And these cells are genetically identical to each other and genetically identical to the original cell. This is the process that our cells use to make more cells whenever new cells are needed. So when cells are dividing to make more erythrocytes, or when your stomach epithelial cells divide to replace cells that are damaged by the stomach acid, this is the process that they use. This process of mitosis is the process that we use to heal, to grow, and to replace worn out cells. The one thing mitosis is not good for is producing gametes. We cannot use the process of mitosis to produce gametes because mitosis produces two end cells. Let's think for a minute about what would happen if we started with a 2N sperm that had two copies of each chromosome and a 2N egg, two copies of each chromosome. When the sperm and the egg join together, you would end up with four copies of each chromosome. That's way too many. It just doesn't work. In order to make gametes, our gametes need to be 1N. Our gametes need to have one copy of each chromosome. That's the situation that we call haploid. In order to make haploid cells, we need to use a different cell division process. We need to use the process of meiosis. 